All right, 100 days as an archer in hardcore Minecraft. Being an archer, I could only use bows for combat. No swords, axes, shovels, fish, pickaxes, anything. Just bows. And not only that, but this Minecraft world is probably not the type that you're used to. There are new animals, new biomes, new bosses, tons of intense dungeons with new illagers. There's mutant beasts. Look how beefy these things are. They're insane. Oh, and also dragons, because who doesn't like dragons, am I right? But yeah, I had to survive in a world with all of that for 100 days using only bows for combat. My only real goal was to survive, and I have a ton of cool arrows in the mod pack that I can use to help me out, but with no melee weapons at all, it was about to be a struggle. Also, I saw that tons of new people found my uh, 100 Days as a Summoner video. Very cool, very lit. But you know what's not cool and not lit? That 98% of those people are not subscribed. Therefore, if you're new here and not subscribed, then you should subscribe and also like the video because then you'd be a very cool person. Yeah. All right. Anyways, let's see if I can survive 100 days in this crazy hardcore world with only a bow. Day one, I spawned into my world in a taiga biome right next to a village. And whoa, look at that. I found a chest right next to my spawn with a bow and an entire stack of arrows. How did that get there? That's crazy. I explored and looted the village and got some decent stuff. I got some bread, potatoes, emeralds, apple pies, some weird fish statue, uh, some silver and gold nuggets, and also some iron armor. Very good start. I then crafted all of my stone tools. I was exploring the area around the village and decided to hunt these wild boars for food, and that was a mistake. These things were doing all sorts of crazy maneuvers and dodging all of my arrows, and they literally almost killed me day one, which was kind of embarrassing, but... At least I got food, right? The next day, I went to investigate a graveyard that I saw at the edge of the village, and that was a terrible idea. The chest inside the graveyard spawned this ghost, which of course attacks me, and I try to shoot it, but arrows pass right through it. So how do I beat an enemy that I can't shoot with my bow? Well, I'm not allowed to use an axe or a sword or anything, so I literally had to punch it with the bow. It's still using the bow, so it is okay, but I definitely didn't want to fight a ghost ever again. So I broke the chest and it gave me a bit of iron and copper and a few other things, but honestly, nothing really worth almost dying over. I temporarily stored all of my things in the villager's house and decided to go hunting. I needed more food and also feathers for more arrows. While out, I also gathered a bunch of dark oak wood for my future house because I kind of wanted to go for like a log cabin type deal and I think it would look pretty good. I actually ended up finding an entire other village before I found a single animal to hunt. So I slept there for the night. On day three, I looted the new village and the best that it had was iron weapons that legally I am not allowed to use. So not really great. As I was activating the waystone for the village, I saw more of those boars. And after what happened last time, I was not about to fight more of those. I spent like all of day three hunting animals and also came across a little house. I was gonna go in to check it out, and then I saw purple particles through the wall indicating an infernal mob, which guarantees the mob is hostile, meaning I was not messing with that right now because I didn't want to die, so I got out of there. Then on day four, I was kind of lost. I ran around and it took like half the day, but eventually I found the second village and I used the waystone there to go back to my first village. I then smelted my ores and cooked my food, and then using the iron that I had right now, I finished my iron armor and also made an iron pickaxe. I also made a bunch more arrows because I would definitely need them. So on day five, I wanted more iron. So I was getting ready to go mining and then this happens. Yeah, creeper just walks into my house and explodes. Like, yeah, okay. I staircased down from inside my house so I could hopefully find my way back whenever I was done mining. And these caves were terrifying. Everything was super dark and I could barely see and there were skeletons and spiders and creepers and zombies everywhere and I was not having fun, but I did end up finding a skeleton spawner and this was incredibly worth it. In the chest in that dungeon, I found a broken heart, which said it would destroy empty heart containers whenever I took lethal damage, which would keep me from dying. And uh, spoiler alert, this thing is uh, necessary for this 100 days. I'll tell you that right now. I came across this steep-ish drop and I couldn't see a thing, so I crafted torch arrows. Whenever I fired these arrows, they would put a torch wherever they landed, and I used these to determine that the cave was very big, but also pretty safe. At least that's what I thought. 
The second I get down there, I get attacked from every direction. Caves were not fun. I did not want to be in them ever again. It being so dark made them way scarier than they had any right to be, and because I could only use a bow, it was pretty dangerous as well. I mined for a little bit longer, and then I went back home. Fighting off all those mobs used most of my arrows, so now I needed more feathers again. I used the two feathers that I had remaining to make luck arrows, which I assumed worked like looting. Just from the eight arrows that I made, I got up to 21 feathers. These arrows were amazing. On day seven, I headed back home and I made more arrows. I had over two stacks of arrows now, and I wanted to convert some of them into other arrow types, so I went to gather some grass and some lava, and then I made two arrow variants. The first one I made is fire arrows, which, as you can imagine, light things on fire. And the other kind that I made is burial arrows, which buries things when they get hit. I figured these would be really good for any enemies that I wasn't really equipped to fight yet. Alright, now I wanted to build my house because, quite frankly, the village kinda sucked. So I spent a few days building my new house. Oh, and then one of the nights that I was building, I tried to sleep and I got a message in the chat saying you can't sleep while it's looking at you. That is probably the creepiest thing I've ever read in a video game ever, and I was a little bit concerned, but I looked around and I saw this creepy ender eye thing. I didn't want to attack it because I figured if it fought back it could be a little bit dangerous, but luckily my burial arrows do not deal direct damage, so I was able to bury it and cause it to suffocate. Oh, and then look what happens when I'm in the middle of building. Another creeper! Like, why? What did I do wrong? I wanted to make a log cabin because I figured like a, you know, an archer in a log cabin would look kind of cool. It'd be kind of like thematic. And I'm not really good at creating builds myself. So I kind of just Googled Minecraft log cabin and referenced one of the images that I found there. So I didn't make it exactly the same, mostly because I didn't want to spend the time to do so. But I will leave a link to the YouTube video of the one that I found in the description. And I was working on my roof when I saw this group of pillagers just staring at me. This was kind of creepy, I'm not gonna lie, so I took them out with my bow, which of course gives me bad omens, so I guess I would need milk before I went back to my village. By day 14, my house was pretty much done. I just needed to get some glass panes for the windows and also transfer stuff from the village and I was good to go. But firstly, I had to get rid of bad omen. I ran off in search of a cow and after a hot minute of looking, I found a yak and I milked it and I got rid of bad omen. I spent day 15 transferring stuff from the village to my cabin. I then made some glass and filled in the windows with glass panes, and my home was complete. At least, for now. Then I made an iron strengthened longbow, which could fire arrows from a longer distance. Now, I wanted more resources. I wanted diamonds, I wanted more iron, I wanted everything. However, I did not want to go mining, the caves sucked, and I didn't want to go back in them because I was scared. So, I spent all of day 16 looking for a dungeon, and I, I found nothing. I found no dungeons at all. I hunted a ton of animals for food, but I, I didn't find any dungeons, so sucks. I also made a small backpack that night to store my items because my inventory filled up quickly. The morning of day 17, there was an infernal zombie outside the cave that I was in. It reflected the damage that I did back to me, and also it spawned cobwebs everywhere. Fighting this thing was a little bit tricky. It took a lot of arrows and a lot of waiting for my health to regen, but eventually I took it out and then I made a sword and harvested all the cobwebs for string, which I could use for more bows later on. Then I kept looking for a dungeon on day 17, and I still did not find a dungeon on day 17. On day 18 though, this was a good day, this was a really good day. I went to some caves and got a bunch of iron, but no diamonds, so I went back up, and then I found a ruined portal. I gathered some of the blocks because I would need them for later, and then I opened the chest. This chest had an item in it called the Cracked Crown. Whenever I equipped this, it would give me an extra 120% to all of my stats. Like, it gave me 12 extra hearts, it made me super fast, it boosted my armor, it also would boost my attack speed, which didn't really matter, but it was still cool. Like, this thing was absolutely busted, and it was just sitting in a chest in the middle of nowhere. This is probably the best item I've ever had in Minecraft. It's literally nuts. At the end of day 18, I found a village with another trinket in it, and this one was called the Missing Page. It could damage all the mobs around me whenever I got hit, but I couldn't use both this and the crown at the same time, and the crown was definitely superior. The next morning, I traded the Fletcher in the village a bunch of sticks for emeralds so I could make more luck arrows later on. 
I traveled away from the village, still trying to find a dungeon with diamonds in it, and I saw this little baby sea serpent in the water. I figured a small one wouldn't be too much of a threat, so I fired an arrow at it. It jumped up on land, and I was able to easily take it out with a few more arrows. It only gave two sea serpent scales, but it was better than nothing. I decided now to sail across the ocean because I figured there might be dungeons with diamonds out there. I also didn't bother sleeping because I figured the ocean was no worse at night than it is during the day. However, my eyesight is much worse at night and I sailed right next to a fire dragon roost. Luckily, the dragon was not there right now, so it didn't attack me, but if it was, I would have been dead for sure. I decided then to sleep off the night because I did not want to do that ever again. The next day, I decided to scout out the dragon's nest. It was a green dragon and pretty small, but it was still a dragon regardless and I did not have the damage to beat that thing yet. And then the dragon saw me. Luckily I have the cracked crown making me insanely fast or I would have been a goner. I then spotted an ice castle which was exactly what I wanted, it was a dungeon! I finally found one! However, I had almost no arrows and my armor was almost broken so I was hunting for feathers and smelting for iron. And while looking for birds I spotted an illager dungeon, it was like an illager face made of glass, it was pretty cool. There was a ruined portal next to it with some runes of lightning, iron, and a gold sword with Illager's Bane 7. If I could actually use swords, that would have been pretty convenient for the dungeon right next to the portal. The runes of lightning were only used to make a relic that I would probably never need, so they weren't really useful. At the end of day 20, I made a new backpack and a fresh set of iron armor. I still needed more feathers though, so I hunted more birds on day 21. I also killed an infernal boar, which gave me a protection to chainmail chestplate. I kept hunting most of day 21, and at the end of day 21 I spotted an Illager Archer Tower. Archers, as you can imagine, use a lot of arrows, so I figured taking it out would allow me to get a ton more arrows to use. And oh, I was very correct. I crafted all the arrows that I could right now and sniped all the Illagers out of the tower, and I climbed the tower to loot it, and I got over a stack of arrows just from this dungeon. And then in the chest, I got three enchanted bows, two with mending, and one with ender mending. Ender Mending was basically just a better form of mending that would store the experience in the weapon even if it had full durability and then use that or experience later on to repair it. So overall, this tower was a major success. The next morning I cooked some food and then I was ready to take on some dungeons. The first dungeon was the Ice Castle. This place was surrounded in Illager guards and inside there were strays. Of course, one of the Illagers gave me bad omens so I would need milk before going home. Also, while I was in the area of the dungeon, I would get slowness and mining fatigue constantly, which got really old really fast. All of the barrels on the ground floor were empty, so I went down the staircase and I spotted a Frostmancer Illager. I took out the first one that I saw pretty easily, and then there were more down in a dark tunnel, and I was basically just blind firing arrows hoping to take them out. The ice magic that they used did a lot of damage, but eventually I managed to take them all out. One of them was infernal and gave me projectile protection 2 boots. However, that was definitely not the best of the drops. Every Frostmancer Illager would give me Totems of Undying and Diamonds. Just from those three that I killed, I got three Totems of Undying and seven Diamonds. This dungeon was perfect for what I needed. I equipped one of the Totems of Undying in a Curio slot and I was now very safe. The actual chests in this dungeon were some bottles of enchanting, some raw fish, and stuff like that. But the actual prize here was definitely the mob drops. The next floor down was just a bunch of pitch black tunnels full of strays and occasionally Frostmancer Illagers. The entire floor was basically just the exact same thing, which is a ton of really long tunnels full of strays that were constantly spawning and at the end I would get a Totem of Undying or some diamonds from an Illager. That was basically it. It was a total pain getting through all the strays and I'm not even sure if I went through the entire dungeon, but I got so many Totems of Undying that I don't even care. I was stacked. One of the strays also dropped a rare item that gave me immunity to slowness and also a speed boost which was pretty good for this dungeon because of the constant slowness that I was getting. I killed a few more Frostmancers throughout the dungeon and after that I was getting kind of confused and lost and it was dark and I just didn't like it anymore so I went back to the surface. I ended up with like 7 Totems of Undying and like 13 Diamonds, which was overall pretty good. Definitely worth doing, but I didn't really want to do it again. The strays were really annoying. Also, with Ender Mending, my bow literally never took damage, so it might as well be unbreakable. I then milked a Yak to get rid of my bad omen effect and was ready to take on the next dungeon, and then I realized that my inventory was completely full. I went to look for a Waystone so I could teleport back home, and I did find one. It was just right next to the dragon. Luckily, the dragon didn't notice me, so I could go home safely and store all my stuff. 
The next day, I cooked all the fish that I got in the dungeon and also made a diamond pickaxe. There was a lot that I wanted to do at this point. I wanted to enchant things, I wanted to make new arrow types, I wanted to do more dungeons. It was a lot, but the three main things I needed were feathers, obsidian, and lapis. I needed these three things to do pretty much everything I wanted to do. Feathers for more arrows, and the obsidian and lapis for enchanting. Now, lapis requires mining, and those caves were kind of scary, and I definitely wanted more arrows before going back into them, so I figured my best bet would be more feathers. I really wanted a chicken farm for feathers, but I'm pretty sure chickens weren't spawning in this mod pack because I literally never found a single one for the entire 100 days, so I had to go hunt birds instead. After spending all of day 24 hunting, I made a stack of normal arrows and 16 protector arrows. These arrows would spawn a little iron golem to attack whatever they hit, which seemed really good, but like I actually didn't use them very much, but it was a really cool idea. Then, on day 25, I got over my fear of the caves and decided to go mining. Actually, I strip mined for like most of it. I ended up digging into lava, so I went ahead and gathered the obsidian that I needed. Then I strip mined for a while, and eventually I found six diamonds. And then right above those diamonds, I found a cave with 47 lapis. I could have gone back up at this point because I had what I needed, but I figured I could mine for a little bit more because it wasn't so bad, and then I was reminded of exactly why I don't do that. Uh, I shot an arrow at a zombie and then everything just sucks real bad real fast. There were creepers and skeletons everywhere and then there was this massive horrifying centipede thing and then there was a red mob spawner that started making weird noises and everything just sucked dude. It was just not a good time. Also if not for that cracked crown earlier I would literally be dead right now. So glad that I had that. <laughs> and uh, needless to say I got out of there immediately. <laughs> Day 26, I started smelting my ores and crafting my enchantment table. I set up the bookshelves and the table, and then I used the bottles of enchanting that I got from the dungeon to reach level 30, and I put level 30 on a bow, and whoa. I got power 3, flame, unbreaking 3, and Eifert's blessing 5, which does more damage to mobs that are on fire, and then an enchantment called scope. I was not a fan of scope, it would just put a giant scope on my screen whenever I shot my bow, which was kind of annoying, but... The bow was so good that I couldn't not use it, so I kind of had to live with it for now. I also put efficiency 1 on my pickaxe, but I would need more levels for anything more. On day 27, I wanted experience for more enchantments because infinity would be amazing. The best way to get EXP would be another dungeon, but I needed more arrows for that, so I used the 8 luck arrows that I could craft to hunt more birds. However, the first bird that I killed, first of all, took 2 arrows, and also was just terrifying. It was called a terror bringer apparently, which was definitely fitting. It also gave me 9 feathers, so it was definitely worth the 2 luck arrows. Then, in that plains biome right next to my base, I found another Illager Archer Tower. This was becoming like my favorite dungeon because it gave me so many arrows every time I fought one. Like, not even the chest, but the Illagers themselves dropped tons of arrows. Just killing a few gave me an entire stack of arrows. I then came across a weird beehive, and I am not the brightest, so I break it and a massive queen bee boss jumps out and starts screaming and shaking my screen and going crazy. I fire arrows at it and thanks to my enchantments I was able to do a lot of damage per arrow, but then it summons an army of bees and start poisoning me and once again without the cracked crown I would be dead. I would be a goner, the cracked crown MVP. I ignored the minions and kept hitting the queen over and over and eventually all of the bee minions disappeared and the queen bee exploded into honey everywhere. She was defeated. She dropped some honeycombs, a stinger, some honey blocks, some bee nests. Overall, nothing super useful, but it was a really cool boss. I then spent the rest of that day hunting for more feathers and then when it became nighttime, I actually chose to not sleep because I really hadn't seen what the nighttime has to offer and I was kind of curious. This night actually ended up not being that threatening, it was mostly just the normal mobs along with some little ghost dudes flying around, but nothing crazy. I did learn though that the archer tower respawns the illagers. These guys give a ton of arrows per kill and I could just farm them whenever I got low. This was an incredible discovery. The next day I went home and made a bunch of arrows and then I also turned two stacks of my normal arrows into vampire arrows by using obsidian. Vampire arrows were just normal arrows but with lifesteal so there was no reason to not use them. Then using some of the ice that I got from the ice castle dungeon, I made 32 frost arrows which could freeze things that I hit. And then I made a stack of knockback arrows which as you could probably imagine, deal a lot of knockback. I had 14 feathers left now and I turned half of them into luck arrows and I was going to turn the other half into reinforced arrows, but there was a recipe conflict and I didn't have a mod for that. 
so I had to install a mod called Polymorph, which let me craft the ones that I wanted. And now I had a lot of different arrows. However, as you can see, this is quite the inventory filler. So I crafted a quiver to hold all my arrows. To use the arrows that are inside the quiver, I would need a switch bow, and a switch bow takes an eye of ender, and eyes of ender in this mod pack require two ender pearls and a blaze rod, and getting both of those kinda sucked. I had ways to get blaze powder, but no blaze rods, and blaze rods were only in the nether, and the nether is very dangerous with no fire resistance and I didn't want to die. And then, ender pearls. Ender pearls only come from endermen, and endermen cannot be shot by a bow, and as someone who can only use a bow, that's an issue. So, uh, yeah, we were gonna have to find a creative solution to that. The next day, I went to the Illager dungeon from before on the off chance that I had ender pearls. And the very first Illagers that I kill, of course, is a banner and gives me bad omen. Go figure. I took out the rest of the Illagers on the bottom floor and looted the chest, which had a decent amount of diamonds. The top floor had an evoker in a giant Illager golem. And the evoker's stupid vexes do so much damage and it spawns a ton of them. I took up the evoker, but half of the vexes were infernal. They were breaking my armor, shredding me, blinding me, poisoning me, everything bad at once. I literally had to eat my golden apple and run away or I probably would have died there. I took out the remaining vexes and then I went back and took down the golem, which couldn't really hit me because of the door. I broke all the obsidian on the top floor and looted the chests, and this dungeon was insane for diamonds. I got 24 diamonds, 48 iron, 18 gold, and also I got another totem of undying, so now I have like 10 or something. However, it had a lot of stuff, but what it did not have was ender pearls, meaning I now had to figure that out. I went to a nearby snow biome and waited for nighttime because I was going to try and find an enderman and kill it somehow. I saw an ice dragon and I'm not really about that, so I went the opposite direction and found two dragon skeletons. I harvested them for their bones and skulls, and later that night I found another dragon skeleton and harvested that as well. I now had a ton of dragon bones and I could use those for tools later on. I finally spotted an enderman, and I looked at it and lured it into a boat. I then built a little wooden structure and drove the boat with the enderman inside of it under the structure, causing the enderman to suffocate. Now, the Enderman did quite a bit of damage while I was doing it, so it was a little bit dangerous, but when the Enderman died, it dropped an Ender Pearl, so it was definitely worth it. Now I needed one more Ender Pearl. And then I spotted a Mutant Enderman. This is a boss level Enderman, and honestly, I had no idea what it could do. I didn't know if it could dodge arrows, I didn't know if it could touch water, I had no idea. I was debating if I could take it on, and then this happened. Yeah, Creeper comes up, blows me into the sky, and I only have half a heart after fall damage. Needless to say, that definitely was a sign to not fight the Enderman. And then, as if things weren't already kinda bad, I start getting sniped by a mutant skeleton. Like, my health was getting obliterated, and this thing was not missing any of its shots. That broken heart that I got earlier that destroys heart containers whenever I die is literally the only reason I survived that. I had to throw my one ender pearl to get away, and I only had two heart containers left, meaning I would have died 20 times to that skeleton just now. That's crazy. I then slept in the forest, which is supposed to restore my heart containers, and for some reason it did not restore them, meaning on day 30 I ran around with two hearts terrified of literally everything. I found a ruined portal and got a ring that would make piglins passive towards me, which was nice, but that's not what I really needed right now. I needed a waystone to get back home. Because I only had two hearts total, I chose to use the diamonds that I got earlier from the dungeon to make a full set of diamond armor. I figured this would make it so I don't instantly die whenever I get shot by a random skeleton or whatever. At least that was the idea. However, I then took a break in real life and then I logged back in and my health was completely restored, which was a relief. When I first got that Cracked Crown Relic, I literally considered not using it because it was so good and so broken, but then I learned that this world is definitely dangerous enough to warrant it. I almost died so many times already. Because I had to use the Ender Pearl to escape before, I still needed two more and I also wanted more dungeon relics. So I used that night to hunt for more dungeons and more Endermen. I found another Enderman while searching and I learned that it's a lot safer to suffocate it when it's not mad at you, so that's what I did and it didn't drop an Ender Pearl. Then I found another enderman near a mausoleum dungeon and did the same thing to it and this time I actually got an enderpearl. 
Also, this mausoleum couldn't be entered without a key that I didn't have, and I also don't even think the key was available in the game yet, so I couldn't actually do it, so don't worry about that. I then found an infernal enderman and used the boat to kill that as well, and it gave me my second ender pearl. And now I just needed a blaze rod. I saw another ice castle, but these dungeons seem to have like a custom loot table, meaning they can't have the relics that I want because they don't have normal vanilla dungeon loot, meaning there's really no point to going down there. I also killed a weird wolf and it gave me a feral wolf head, which is a pretty cool trophy, so you know, I'll take it. And then on night 31, I found a really weird illager tower. It was surrounded in all kinds of illagers, which I killed with my bow and then I went inside. The first chest that I looted had a callus trinket, which would be immune to cactus damage and stuff like that, so you know, it was kind of bad. And the only other two pieces of equipment that I found in this dungeon were rings of strength, which do literally nothing for a bow. So yeah, this tower was effectively useless. The next morning, I saw another one of those towers, but more importantly, I saw an archer tower. Now, I had to use a lot of arrows on this adventure, so I got out my luck arrows to take out the archers, and just look how many arrows I'm getting per kill. It's literally insane. I then went to the other pillager tower, and these things were such a pain. There were illagers everywhere, constantly shooting me with arrows, and then this one armored one in a pit throws baby creepers at me. Like, where did he get those? I killed most of them, and then I go to get the drops from the armored one in the pit, and the pit is just full of creepers. Thankfully, I had diamond armor, or that could have been very bad. I got these creeper spores, which could be used to make mischief arrows, but I kind of forgot that I had those immediately after, and I never ended up making those arrows, so sucks to suck, I guess. <laughs> And then the loot from this tower was very disappointing. I got another ring of strength, another missing page, and another cracked crown, which is all stuff that I already had and couldn't use. Very cool. I was sailing in the ocean to find new land, and then a giant red sea serpent jumps out of the ocean and bites me. I quickly get to land, and this thing still comes after me. This was beyond terrifying, but after I got on land, it never hit me once, and I was able to take it out with my bow. The ocean was a very scary place, although I did see a whale jump out of the water, so that was kind of cool. I then got jumped by another sea serpent, and at that point I just decided to stick to land whenever I could. On day 33, there was a hydra that I found in the swamp biome. After sniping it from a distance for like 5 minutes straight, I managed to take it out. It dropped 8 hydra fangs, which could be used to make a poison arrow, which I also forgot I had and also never used. I sailed across the ocean, which was pretty risky because if I ended up fighting a sea serpent in the water, I would definitely lose that fight, there's no doubt in my mind. After a bit, I ended up getting caught in a mermaid song which pulled me in towards it. I took out the mermaid with my bow, and honestly, that song might have saved my life because there was a massive sea monster shark thing that came out of the water and tried to attack me. It took a metric ton of arrows, but eventually I took this thing out and it gave me 6 ancient scales which could be used for armor. And then, on land, I accidentally wandered into a village, completely forgetting I had the Bad Omen effect, which starts a raid. I'ma be honest, I wasn't really interested in a raid right now, so I used the Waystone in the village to go home, and left the villagers to fend for themselves. It might be a bit of a scummy move, but I'ma be honest, I don't care if they die, and I don't want to die myself, so it works out in my books. On day 34, I stored all the stuff that I got, and I also enchanted a bow hoping to get infinity, which didn't work. Now, I wanted to get my switch bow, but I really wanted some type of fire resist before going to the nether, and the only real way to get that is to find more dungeons, so it was time to explore again. I found a ruined portal that night, which gave me magma walkers. These turned lava under my feet into rock, which was pretty close, but it was not quite what I wanted. I then found a really big building in a roofed forest, and I thought it was a woodland mansion, but it was apparently something called a theater. I went in, and of course it was full of illagers. I took them all out in one or two arrows, and then there was the boss, the Conjurer. I started firing arrows at him, and he fired off a bunch of projectiles and then teleported. He teleported me around as well, and he also turned invisible, but he was on fire, so that didn't really do much. He also really wasn't attacking me very much. So I was able to take him out pretty easily, and right before he died, he summoned a killer bunny, which got stuck in a fence, so it really wasn't a threat. He dropped his hat, which I put in my cosmetic armor slot, and I look kinda cool now, not gonna lie. Then I ran for a bit more and found a village. I spent that night looting it, and then by morning I had determined that there is absolutely nothing of value there. 
Then I found a boss bar for the Spider Queen. And after searching for a bit, I found the nest. And I absolutely cheesed this thing. I just sat there and sniped it from a hole in the roof and it couldn't do anything. However, after killing it, I heard the most awful sound of like a million spiders inside the nest. I tried taking them out from above, but it was literally not putting a dent in their numbers. After a while, I did what any smart person would do, and I vein mined the entire nest, and then I ran for my life. It actually was a lot easier to get rid of them this way, and after using literally all of my normal and vampire arrows, I was able to take them out and run in and get the queen's drops. The queen dropped a spider charm, and when I used it, it spawned a baby spider that seemed to be passive towards me. However, it didn't seem to fight for me. So I looked it up on Google, and apparently it tames with rotten flesh, but the two that I had wasn't enough, so I sort of just left it there for now. I then found a house in this biome, which gave me this cool soul armor, and it had a hidden room with a golden apple and some rotten flesh. Then I used that rotten flesh to go back and tame the spider, and look at this thing! Cute boy! However, on day 37, I was looking for a waystone, and it took about half the day to find one, and by the time I found one, cute boy had disappeared. I literally didn't know what happened. It was just gone. Like, one moment it was there, next moment it was gone. It probably got lost somewhere, but it's unfortunate. Regardless, I got home and I started sorting all my stuff. I also put the soul armor on display, and then I repaired my armor as much as I could with the diamonds that I had right now. The next day, I needed flint, so I went out and gathered a ton and came back home. I made a ton more vampire arrows, and then I started enchanting all my stuff. I got protection 2 on my chest plate, and then I finally got an infinity bow. It had two curses on it, and one of them would activate if I died, which I can't do in a hardcore world, and the other would set me on fire if I hit the same enemy four times without killing it, which would be a total pain, but I could at least work around that for the sake of infinity. And I did test it, and unfortunately, infinity does not work on my special arrow types, so I would need to carry at least one normal arrow to make use of it. However, Infinity was still very worth it because I could save my better arrows for dungeons. On day 39, I wanted to get more diamonds to repair my gear, materials for bigger backpacks, and also slime balls. So I picked one of the few directions I've never gone before, and I started exploring again. I know I'm doing a lot of exploring, and it might seem like I'm trying to stall going to the nether for that blaze rod, and that is because that's exactly what I'm doing. Fire is scary, what do you want from me? And it also didn't help that I had a bow that could now set me on fire, so I really wanted that fire resist. And I looked and I could actually make an item that would give me fire resist, but I needed slime balls to make it. At least, I needed magma cream to make it. I then spent a while hunting animals, and then I had to go through a jungle because it was the only direction I hadn't gone yet. And jungles kinda suck to explore, not gonna lie, but I found this cool gorilla, look at this guy, yeah. And by nighttime, I was able to upgrade one of my backpacks to medium, which gave me a lot more space. Then, that night, I spotted a mutant zombie. Actually, two mutant zombies. I shot at one from far away, and it let out a massive roar. And after a few more arrows, it fell over, and I thought I had one, and then it got back up. So I shot it again, and it went down again, and then it fully disappeared, so I really thought I won this time. And then I go up, and apparently it glitched out, and it was invisible, and it started attacking me while invisible. I ran away, I wasn't really dealing with that right now. But that was cool and weird, I guess. Then in this plains biome, I come across a very odd collection of structures and mobs. There was a village next to a weird dungeon, next to a cyclops, next to a pillager archer tower, which was inside a dragon's nest. Like, the stars had to literally align to generate this. Also, the orange dungeon required some sort of weird way to enter, and I didn't know how to do it, so I kind of just ignored it. I started firing arrows at the Cyclops, and then I learned that there was also a graveyard in that biome. And the ghosts kept interrupting my fight, and they were really annoying because I had to punch them to death. It was not very fun, but eventually I took out the Cyclops. I then ran in to get the Cyclops drops, and then I ran to the village and slept because the nighttime was horrific. I hated it. The next morning, I looted the blacksmith and got three diamonds, and then as I was searching the other houses, the dragon decided that today was the day to attack the village. That might have been my fault, but I really couldn't fight a dragon right now, so that was my cue to leave. And then on the way out, I found a ruined portal, which was another structure in this giant plains biome of structures, and the ruined portal chest had magma cream in it, which was exactly what I needed, and I don't think it generates in those chests, so I was kind of confused, but I found out why later. 
Then I glance back at the village one last time before leaving just in time to see the fire dragon disappear. I ran back in and saw a massive shadow on the ground which is where the dragon's body was meant to be, meaning the guards actually killed the dragon. I never expected that. However, this village had no use for dragon scales, so I was the one to reap the rewards, and I got 26 dragon scales. That was enough scales for a full set of dragon scale armor. It also meant that the dragon's nest was empty now, so I went over and took out the pillagers so I could loot the nest safely. And that is when I realized something amazing. The Ifrit's Judgment curse of my bow had said that it would give me rewards whenever I killed an enemy in less than 4 hits. What I did not realize is that it would put the rewards into a chest whenever I opened it. Most of the rewards were firework rockets, but I also got things like magma cream, obsidian, stuff like that. It literally couldn't be more perfect. Magma cream was exactly what I needed. However, this enchantment got really annoying later on when it filled my chest with random fireworks, but for now, it's really good. The dragon's nest didn't have much in terms of loot, but honestly, I didn't even care. I had dragon scales, I had magma cream, I had everything I could ever dream of. I spent the rest of that day running around and exploring the area, and then come nightfall, I used the waystone in a snow village to go back home. I used all the stuff that I gathered to upgrade both of my backpacks into large backpacks, and just look how much these can hold. I had plenty of inventory space. Then I made my dragon armor, but I didn't want to use it yet. I wanted to get this stuff enchanted with unbreaking and stuff before I used it, but I had like no levels right now. But what I did have was everything I needed to make the obsidian skull. Using a lava bucket, I made an item called a molten alloy, and then I combined that with four redstone dust to make blaze powder. I then used that blaze powder along with the magma cream we got earlier to make the obsidian skull, which made me immune to burning. I could still take fire damage, but I couldn't be on fire, if that makes sense. And with my lava boots, I wouldn't have to worry about lava either. And now I was all set for the nether. Sorta. In this mod pack, you can't light a nether portal with a flint and steel. Instead, you need a netherite lighter, which requires four of those molten alloys. I went and got the stuff that I needed, and then I came back and made my alloys, and then I made my netherite lighter. I also repaired my armor as much as I could with my four diamonds. And now I was actually ready for the nether. Now, if y'all watched my 100 Days as a Summoner video, you would know that in some mods, nether portals can just spawn mobs for no reason. And I was not about to risk a fire mob spawning when my house is made entirely of wood. So I built a stone room to put my portal in, and then I went to the nether. In the nether, I spawned into a cave, and on one end of my portal, there was a pretty steep drop. I went back home for a minute, and I crafted rope coils. And I could use this rope to safely get up and down from my portal. The nether was very creepy. The lighting was dim, and the walls were literally laughing at me. And there were also ghosts that made horse noises for some reason. I just wanted to get my blaze rods and get out of here because this place was not fun. There were also blocks of sand that would just fall beneath me whenever I walked in them. Like, how is that even fair? And there were so many weird mobs here. There were poisonous fireflies. There were these weird golem things that were throwing pets at me. There was all kinds of stuff. I was completely terrified and the terrain here was absolutely horrific. And then I remembered my lava walkers. I could literally run on lava. I don't know why I was so scared the whole time. I ran across the lava ocean and these weird basalt golems could do literally nothing about it. I came across this weird nether fortress style dungeon and whenever I got closer one of these statues came to life and attacked me. I shot it twice with my bow, taking it out, and it dropped a blaze rod. Now this is what I came here for, but I needed at least one more. I saw two paglins nearby and decided to trade them all the gold that I brought with me. And I ended up getting six ender pearls and a few other things, nothing insane, but the ender pearls were very, very good because endermen were very annoying to kill. I began looting some of the chests in the dungeon, and I got a few diamonds, some gold, and a lot of nether wart. I very carefully took out the remaining guard statues and got more blaze rods. Sounds around me were growing pretty intense, and I was very alarmed. I went into one of the dungeon doorways, and the entire dungeon was basically just a giant maze of these doors. There were some rooms that had spawners with guards, and other rooms had chests with loot. And with how much damage the guards did, I decided that this dungeon definitely warranted vampire arrows. I cleared most of the dungeon, and I got a few diamonds, a bunch of gold, some tungsten ingots, but overall, they didn't really give anything insane. And then eventually my helmet broke, and I decided to leave. 
I didn't know how to get back, but I also didn't have to. I made a brewing stand, and then using the water bottles that the piglins traded me, I made mundane potions, and then I turned them into recall potions with nether quartz. And then I learned that they don't work in different dimensions, so I guess I did have to find a way back now. I only needed four more obsidian to make a nether portal, so I went to find some. I traded a piglin all of my gold and got up to 11 obsidian. I then made a portal and went back to the overworld, and I literally spawned on a mermaid rock. If I was less geared than I am right now, I literally could have died there. That's crazy. Although it could have been a dragon's nest, so I guess it could have been worse. Now that I was in the overworld, I could actually use the recall potions to go back home. With the blaze rods, I could now finally make the switch bow. I made it, and then I enchanted it with level 30. I ended up with Hunting 3, Power 3, and Unbreaking 3. And for those that don't know, Hunting 3 makes me do more damage to animals. This switch bow could freely swap to any arrow in my inventory or in my quiver. For now, I would use this bow for utility arrows because my normal bow is still much better for combat. Then I upgraded my quiver to the big quiver and got to making more arrows. I made 16 teleport arrows, 16 thunder arrows, 8 TNT arrows, and a bunch of torch arrows. I would have to use a lot of these sparingly because they were pretty expensive, but now I had a wide variety of arrow types and the switchbow made them super easy to use. Then I made this item called a pedestal, which was super useful, but I would need more quartz before I could use it. I went to the nether for quartz and I literally could not find enough. I also accidentally used all my normal arrows for torch arrows, so I didn't have any to use in the nether. Oh, I also ran out of food. I went back to the overworld, got more arrows, and then I went hunting for food. Eventually, I found a hunter illager's house, which gave me like half a stack of steak, and then I went back to the nether for more quartz. It took the entirety of day 46 to find enough quartz. Because of how the nether was set up in this mod pack, quartz was insanely hard to find. But by day 47, I was able to fully set up the pedestal. I was about to use the pedestal, but then I went inside and got a little bit distracted by enchanting. I was hoping to get Fortune 3 on my pickaxe, but that didn't happen. But I did get Depth Strider 3 on my dragon boots. And then the next day, I used my new pedestal. What this thing does is that it can enhance some of the arrows in the mod to make them even better. For example, if I put the thunder arrow into the pedestal, it gives me a thunderstorm arrow. And to show off the difference, this is a thunder arrow. And this is a thunderstorm arrow. Not every arrow could be enhanced, but quite a few could. And it took quite a bit of time, so I spent the entirety of day 48 enhancing all my arrows. I could upgrade my fire arrows, thunder arrows, burial arrows, luck arrows, and knockback arrows. And then that night I tested some of them out. Now, because I've never used the knockback arrow, this is what it does. Just a really big knockback, but nothing crazy. But the upgraded version is called the fly to the moon arrow. As you can probably guess by the name, it sends things to the moon. Like, it literally sends the mobs so high up that they despawn because they're too far away. It's crazy. It was fun, but probably not the most practical for getting items. The transformed luck arrow just gives more drops per kill, so I didn't want to waste one. But the burial arrow AoE just buries things in a big AoE around it. So rather than one mob, it could bury in multiple mobs. And the last arrow to test was the firestorm arrow. However, it was raining, so I couldn't even test it that night. The next day I went to a cave to test the arrow, and it spawns three fire tornadoes wherever it lands. This arrow was super cool, but it was a little bit laggy, and also, I feel like enemies aren't going to sit still long enough for it to do very much, but it looked really cool. My next goal was to get the dragon armor enchanted, which means that I need more experience, meaning I need to take on more dungeons, meaning it's exploring time again! Let's go gamers! I then used the waystone in my village to teleport as far away as I could because I figured that'd be the best way to find new things. I actually ended up coming across my nether portal on the mermaid rock. Like, what are the odds of that? And then I found a massive illager tower. While trying to enter the bottom floor, I got swarmed by illagers with wooden swords, which was actually the perfect opportunity to try out my thunderstorm arrow. They got blown away. I was able to get through the first floor, but on the next floor, the Illagers were being given strength by one of their supports, and they did a lot of damage. I tried using a Protector Arrow to spawn an Iron Golem to help out, but it died, like, immediately. 
I managed to take out those Illagers, but like barely. I got down to half HP, and with how much defense I have, that is a lot of damage. I used my frost arrows in the next room to freeze them in place, but then it was just the supports anyways and they don't fight back, so it was kind of a waste. However, the chest in that room had a power 5 bow. That was more than appreciated. I approach the next floor and a ton of infernal pillagers start blinding me and poisoning me and everything just sucked, but I retreated into the previous room and was able to take them all out and get to their chests. And these chests that they were guarding contained a ton of potion arrows, but the arrows were all positive effects, so I didn't really see the point in taking any of them. These floors were getting a lot tougher, so I decided to use my reinforced arrows for this. And these arrows did damage. They destroyed all of the Illagers, and I was able to get another Power 5 bow and an enchanted golden apple out of that floor. I one-shot every Illager on the next floor with a reinforced arrow, and this floor had a ton of potions and potion ingredients. Very valuable. And the next floor up was absolute chaos. When I looked up there, it was pitch black, so I fired torch arrows at the walls to light it up, and I get up there, and there are a ton of mobs. And while I was fighting the mobs, an infernal zombie spawned and fired a fireball, causing the floor to catch fire. Once most of the mobs were defeated, I broke the wall and started breaking all the spawners. Then I looted the chest and I got another enchanted golden apple, a mending bow, diamonds, and a lot more, but by this point, the tower is completely burning down. I started mining the wall of ores in that room as fast as I could before the tower burned down, and by the end of it, it seemed like the fire had mostly put itself out, which was definitely a relief. The next floor was the final floor. I got up there and immediately took out the Infernal Illager King with two reinforced arrows. These arrows were nutty and I absolutely loved it. I cleared the rest of the mobs in the room and then blocked the staircase so no more could come in. I looted the chests and these just contained tons of diamonds, enchanted golden apples, an infinity bow, and just tons of really good loot. There were tons of ore blocks in the room as well, and this tower was just incredible. It was a total pain to take down, but the loot was beyond worth it. Then I used a boat to get down from the tower and saw another one of those Illager towers from earlier. I just sort of ignored all the Illagers and ran to the tower to loot it, and it basically only had some rings of strength, so it really wasn't even worth my time. I then found a nearby village and used their waystone to go back home for the night. I was able to enchant my dragon leggings with protection 3 and also vitae 2 which gives me extra hearts. I then combined my bow with one of the ones that I found in the dungeon to get power 5. And then I crafted a bunch of triple arrows which would fire 3 arrows at once rather than 1. After that dungeon I really wanted a better AoE attack and I figured this was exactly what I needed. And I also made a lot of reinforced arrows. I still needed more levels to finish my dragon armor's enchantments and I also wanted to find a desert biome because I hadn't found one yet, and I expected desert temples to have a lot of really good loot. I made an item called Nature's Compass, which could point me to whatever biome that I wanted. So I set it to desert, and I followed it. I ended up coming across a super cool looking building, and I went inside to loot it, and it was just pitch black. And I went through the entire building, and there were like three spawners, and the chests had bread and a few emeralds, and that was basically it. A building this cool, and all it's gonna give me is bread. Like, okay. And then, that night, I got to the desert biome. There were these angry tornadoes, there were giant bugs, there were lightning dragons. Overall, not the safest place. But I figured that where there's danger, there might be good loot. The next morning, I began exploring the desert. I killed a giant spider, a few giant bugs, and then I got attacked by a death worm. These things were terrifying and ugly and gross, and also very hard to hit with a bow. They were usually underground. Then a bit later, a death worm jumps out of the ground and uses its tongue to grab me and throw me into the air, and I take a ton of fall damage. Now, don't get me wrong, billion IQ strats, but could it not? There were also these angry dogs that attacked me during that, and when I ran back over there, I found insane fur on the ground that they had dropped. I guess they had died to the death worm. Then I climbed over a hill, and a fire dragon spotted me. It starts coming after me, and while I'm running away, an infernal version of those stupid dogs starts pulling me back trying to get me killed. Like, why? <laughs> Eventually I got far enough away and it seemed that the dragon was fighting the dogs instead. Apparently I was leaving a little bit too slowly and the dragon noticed and it hit me with its fire breath and that was my sign to get all the way out of there. I came across a desert village and I got a horse flute which could basically just teleport my horse to me whenever I wanted. However, I did not have a horse nor did I plan on taming a horse so I didn't really have a use for that. A bit away from the village, I ran into an alpha insane dog. 
I killed it and it gave me its eye, which I could use for a couple things I didn't need and also didn't really care about. I came across a few more of those dogs later on, and I guess they were trying to, like, kill a dragon skeleton or something. They're not the smartest in the world, but at least they look kind of cool, right? However, while they might not be the smartest dogs ever, I definitely was not the smartest gamer ever. And yeah, the next day I picked a fight with that dog, and the entire pack tried to kill me. I literally was so terrified that I was going to die to something so stupid, but luckily I made it out okay. But by that night my armor was nearly destroyed, so I had to head home. I was able to use the drops from those dogs to make glue, and this glue could slightly repair items' durability. And the keyword there is slightly, it does not repair very much, but it's better than nothing. I wanted to enchant at least one more piece of my dragon armor before I started using it. And earlier I got this experience battery relic, which I don't think I put in my notes because I don't remember reading that. Anyways, this thing was way better than I realized. So the way that it worked is that whenever I gained a level, it would just give me like half a level of experience for free, which is really good. The only issue with it is that I can't use this and my cracked crown at the same time, but for farming basic mobs that aren't a threat, it's definitely worthwhile. By morning, I was almost level 29, so I could almost enchant a piece of armor. I went over to the archer tower near my base and farmed the rest of my EXP from them and got up to level 30. And then I enchanted the dragon scale chestplate and got Vitae 2 and Unbreaking 3. In my opinion, Unbreaking was the most important enchantment to get because if this armor breaks before I can get more scales for it, I'm kinda just screwed. But uh, yeah, with that, I now felt comfortable enough to wear my full set of dragon scale armor. However, I still needed to enchant the helmet. I went out to get lava to make more firestorm arrows, and while out, I ended up getting to level 30. And then, after getting back home, I enchanted my helmet with protection 3. And now that I was sufficiently geared, I wanted to try and take on some dragons. I wanted to be able to repair my armor whenever I needed it, or make backup armor in case mine broke. Now, dragons are no joke. I decided to use my reinforced arrows with my power 5 bow because I wanted as much damage as I possibly could. I was walking through a cold tiger biome when I get absolutely jump scared by an ice dragon's attack. I hadn't even seen it myself yet and it just jumps me from across the biome, like okay. I was able to avoid the ice breath long enough to get close and then I started firing reinforced arrows at the ice dragon. Because of how strong my bow and arrows were, within like 5 arrows I was able to defeat my first dragon. I was a dragon slayer, let's go gamers. I gathered the scales and everything and then I looted the nest. I got some sapphires and some diamonds, but overall, nothing too crazy. That dragon was one of many. I felt like I could take on the entire world right now, and that is exactly what I wanted to do. The next morning, I found another ice dragon, and then I tried using my frost arrow to immobilize it, and I'ma be honest, I don't really know why I thought the frost arrow would work on the ice dragon, but uh, it did not. <laughs> so I kinda just took it down with my reinforced arrows. I ended up spending the next two days hunting ice dragons. I didn't really keep count, but I took down like four or five dragons, and these guys give a, a lot of experience. However, the scales that I needed for my armor were gray fire dragon scales, so I probably should have been going for those instead, but oh well. On night 59, I ended up getting a ring that pulls experience orbs to me, which wasn't all that great, but it would definitely be better than my piglin ring, at least while I'm in the overworld. On day 60, there was a dungeon that I wanted to take on, but right next to it, there was an ice dragon nest. I was going to take out the dragon and then fight the dungeon, but then the dragon just decides to fly into the dungeon and decimate the entire place. However, it didn't even kill any mobs, it just sort of destroyed the room and then that was it. Regardless, I killed the dragon myself and then I stormed the dungeon. It really wasn't too much of a challenge, it was mostly just a lot of illagers that I one shot with my bow. However, I got like 15 diamonds and a bunch of gold, so it was worth it. Then, right near that dungeon, I found a massive illager fortress. Like, when I say massive, I mean beyond huge. This thing was bigger than some entire biomes are. I saw a fire dragon nest nearby and I was going to take it on, and then the dragon flies directly into the fortress. Now, naturally, I assumed that the dragon would wreak havoc and destroy like half the fortress, because, you know, it's a dragon but I am almost certain that they killed the dragon without a single illager dying. I was definitely not going to try and fight this entire army right now. I needed much better gear first. On day 61, I had a lot of blue dragon scales and a lot of levels. I figured that I might not be able to find a gray fire dragon super easily, so I decided to enchant a brand new set of armor just in case. 
And my enchantments were insane. My boots got Protection 4, Depth Strider 3, Vitae 3, and Unbreaking 3. My chest plate got Protection 3, Unbreaking 3, and Golem Soul 4. Golem Soul would make me a little bit slower, but I would resist knockback, so I would say that it's pretty good. And then my pants got Protection 3, Unbreaking 3, a curse that does not matter because I'm on Hardcore mode, and then Swift 2, which could make me faster, but use more hunger. I never saw a good enchantment for my helmet, so I didn't enchant that quite yet. I now wanted to defeat more dragons to get more experience for my helmet because I was so close to a godlike armor set. So I spent all of day 62 running in a direction to find some dragons, and I found literally zero dragons. I did find a pretty cool forest with some bamboo though, so I grabbed some of that to take home. The next day I took out a sapphire and a white ice dragon and got to level 30. Then later that day, I finally killed my first fire dragon. It actually did end up being the same color as my current armor, but the new armor was so much better enchant wise that I was still going to swap anyways. Then at night, I saw a boss bar for a necromancer. I looked around and spotted a small building in a weird orange biome. I went over to it and went down the stairs and there was the necromancer boss. I shot it a few times and then it spawned these wraiths. Once those were down, I ran further in and shot the Necromancer a few more times. It seemed to be invisible, but it was on fire so I could still see it. It then spawned a metric ton of these weird skeletons, and I literally could not handle them, so I had to retreat out of the building. And after taking out the skeletons for a little bit, the Necromancer sort of just died? I don't know if it was hidden among the skeletons, or I don't know if its HP was tied to the skeleton spawns or whatever, I have no idea, but either way, I defeated it, so that was cool. <laughs> I went down and looted the room that it was in, and I got a soul crystal and some soul shards. And the boss dropped a necromancer staff, which could fire a projectile, meaning it was a weapon, meaning I was not allowed to use it. It did make a cool trophy, though. However, this soul crystal could be used to make a soul healer, which was actually kinda nutty. It was an item that whenever I used it, it would give me regeneration 3 and health boost 3 for a couple seconds. It had a cooldown, but being able to regenerate my HP whenever I wanted, just for free, was so beyond nice. Uh, in fact, it came in handy almost immediately. I was wandering near a desert, and then I started getting sniped constantly by a mutant skeleton. And unlike before, when I almost died, I could actually fight back now. Despite my really good armor, this thing was doing quite a bit of damage to me, so I used my soul healer to heal myself up. I spammed arrows at the skeleton, and despite literally every mob that exists trying to help it out, I did manage to defeat it. Upon dying, it exploded into bones everywhere. And as I was gathering the drops, another mutant skeleton starts sniping me again. So I used the soul healer and then swapped my reinforced arrows and take this guy out. That's two mutant skeletons in one night. What are the odds? The next day I saw a boss bar in the desert for a pharaoh, and after looking for a bit, I found the temple. And I don't know if it was supposed to be cut in half the way that it was, but it makes it way easier on me, so I'll take it. I swapped to my reinforced arrows, one shot each of the guards, and then shot the pharaoh until it died. It literally never even fought back because of the distance, so I assume I was definitely not supposed to be able to do that. While I was going to get the loot, a ton of scarabs come out of the temple and attack me. One of them was golden, and it dropped the golden scarab item. And then I looted the room that the pharaoh was in, and I got a ton of gold, lapis, a few diamonds, an enchanted golden apple, and these really cool banners from around the room. The golden scarab item was pretty similar to the soul healer. However, this one gives resistance 3 and regeneration 1 for a few seconds. Personally, I feel like the soul healer was better, and I only had so much hotbar space, so I wouldn't really bother with the scarab. I ran around until I found a waystone, and then I headed back home. I used the mutant skeleton pieces to craft armor, and honestly, it didn't look half bad, and it kind of fit the whole archer theme I had going, so I used this as my cosmetic armor. Though a bit later on, I did end up hiding the helmet. I then put up the banners that I got, and then put the gold scarab and necromancer staff on display. Then I enchanted my helmet with protection 4 and aqua affinity, and then I used the rest of my levels to enchant books and switch bows. I got a power 4 on breaking 3 switch bow, and then later on I enchanted another dragon scale helmet, and got Unbreaking 3 and Vitae 3. Then I enchanted a switch bow and got another Power 4 one so I could get Power 5. I combined the two dragon helmets to make a super good one, and now I had a full set of godlike dragon armor. However, I did not have the experience right now to combine my Power 4 bows. Power 4 is better than my current switch bow though, so I used one of those until I got more EXP. Then, using that bamboo that I got earlier, I made a blowgun and blow darts. 
These darts don't deal any damage, but whenever I shoot a mob with them, it allows me to capture it in a crate. Now, if you consider this not using a bow, then oh well, but I was going to have my fun with this thing. The next day, I tested the blowgun in crates by capturing a turkey and then releasing it a bit later. This could be pretty fun. Then I made some luck arrows and put them on my pedestal, and when they were done transforming, I went to the nether. I really wanted to fight the wither, although I gotta admit I didn't exactly know how I was gonna fight the wither, because at half HP it becomes immune to arrows, so I was gonna have to figure that one out. Regardless of that, I found a soul sand biome with a ton of wither skeletons, and I killed a bunch of them until I eventually got two wither skulls and eight wither skull fragments. Now, you need nine fragments for a skull, so I needed one more fragment. And every wither skeleton drops a fragment, meaning I literally needed one more skeleton. And right then is when I stopped finding wither skeletons. I literally could not find another one to save my life. I spent the entire next day looking for more skeletons, and I found nothing. Eventually, I gave in and I went into a dungeon. And there was a spawner in here for these two-headed wither skeletons that guaranteed to drop a skull every single time. Literally, if I had just found this sooner, I would have been in and out in like five minutes, but nope, it had to be the literal last thing I checked. However, in this dungeon, I did end up finding flame, infinity, and mending books, so it's not all bad. I then made a nether portal, went back to the overworld, and then recall potioned home. Because I now had wither bones, I made a dragon bone pickaxe, but I couldn't enchant it yet, so I wouldn't use it. On day 68, I was ready to fight the Wither. Because the Wither is immune to arrows during the second phase, I decided to fight it in a village because based on what I saw with the dragon before, the guards seemed pretty strong and I figured they might help out. In fact, I actually went back to the same village where the guards killed that dragon and I was going to have them help me out, but all I could find was the remains of the guards. I knew for a fact that they were still alive when I left here before, so I was a little bit concerned. There wasn't even a villager in sight, but what there was was a giant cyclops. This thing had killed all of the villagers and all of the guards. And then it started chasing me. I started running away while firing arrows at it every now and then, and eventually I managed to take it out. The cyclops dropped its eye, but that wasn't going to bring the villagers back. That village was done for. Like literally all life in that village was gone. So instead, I teleported to another random village and I placed my soul sand and my wither skulls and summoned the wither. Using my switch bow, I fired reinforced arrows at the wither over and over and I did a lot of damage. Once it got below half HP, I couldn't hit it with arrows anymore and then I led it further into the village so the guards could help out. However, the guards were a little bit slow and didn't help very much, so I had to just start punching the wither with my bow. Because of the cracked crown boosting my damage, I actually did a little bit more than I thought I would, so it wasn't so bad. After I punched it down super low, one guard and an iron golem came in to finish it off, and then unfortunately they both immediately died to the wither effect. Their sacrifice was not in vain though, because I got my nether star, and I do not think I explained exactly why I wanted this thing. When I got home, I combined the two power four switch bows to get power five, and then I crafted that bow with the nether star to get true infinity. Now any kind of arrow that I used was infinite. Thunderstorm arrows, firestorm arrows, explosive arrows, uh, teleport arrows, frost arrows, vampire arrows, literally all of them were infinite and I could use as many as I want and I would never run out. And because I had power 5 and true infinity now, I didn't need my old wooden bow anymore so I put it on display and retired it. I then put my flame and mending books on the switch bow and I had the ultimate bow. Actually, it did have a pretty amazing upgrade remaining, but we'll get there when we get there. I then used one of the spare wither skulls that I had to make wither arrows, which were really expensive so I never thought I would use them, but with true infinity I might as well. The next day I wanted to get more arrow types because they were all infinite so I might as well get the best ones that I can. I made piercing arrows which pierce armor and I think go through entities, and also air arrows which cause levitation. I then put the air arrows in the pedestal and upgraded them to AoE. I had one more arrow type that I wanted to make, but I would need another ender pearl to do it. While I was waiting for nighttime to get an enderman to spawn, I ended up testing my triple arrows against an ice dragon. And I'ma be honest, against a big target, these arrows might just be better than reinforced ones. This dragon got shredded. Then that night I found another enderman and trapped it in a boat, but before I could even suffocate it, I started getting assaulted by another mutant skeleton. Like, there are so many different kinds of mutants that could spawn, but the only one that was ever attacking me was skeletons. Like, why? 
I absolutely obliterated it with triple arrows, and then I suffocated the Enderman in a block. Of course, it didn't drop an Ender Pearl, so I had to find another one, suffocate that one, and then I got my Ender Pearl. I went home, made an Eye of Ender, and then crafted Arrows of the Searcher. These arrows would automatically lock on and attack whatever they get close to, which seemed really good for anyone that has bad aim. Not that I have bad aim, but you know. On day 70, I wanted to take down a Lightning Dragon. It was the only Dragon type that I hadn't defeated yet, and I've never even fought one in previous mod packs because it didn't exist when I played before, so it was a brand new thing to me. I was on my way to a savanna biome, and then I had a bit of a close call with these birds in the swamp, and if not for Death Strider, I probably would have been in trouble. Like, just look how many arrows they hit me with, it's crazy. I spent day 70 traveling to a savanna biome, and then on day 71, I arrived. And immediately, I spotted a dragon nest with a lightning dragon. I approached and fired a wither arrow, waking up the dragon. Then it came after me. Sorta. It, uh, was honestly kind of a disappointment. It didn't even use a breath attack, and it just kind of walked towards me until it died, so wasn't really much of a fight. I found another one further into the savanna biome, which actually used the lightning breath. It looked super cool, but the odds of finding a lightning dragon underground to get my own were slim to none. They only spawned in savannas and badlands biomes, and those were kind of rare. I took out the dragon pretty easily, and then I collected the scales. At the end of that day, I found another lightning dragon, and I did something pretty crazy just to see if it would work. I shot the sleeping dragon with a blow dart, and then I shoved it in a crate. I had a lightning dragon in a box. I don't really know how it fit in there, and honestly, I don't even care. It was so funny just to have a lightning dragon in a box. My goal now is more villages. There was a certain relic that I wanted to get, and I could only find it in certain village chests. It was a quiver, which as you can imagine, is pretty thematic for an archer. It went on my back, and it could double the draw speed of my bow, which seemed like it would be pretty good. I checked the village nearby, and I didn't find it, but what I did find was a fire dragon nest. So I hit it with a dart, and I put it in a box. Once again, I didn't really have a use for it, but I was kind of starting a collection. I then found this little desert temple thing that just had barrels of free loot, like there was no guards or anything, just free stuff. There were recall potions, and there was also a balloon relic which would let me jump higher, which was pretty cool. Overall, nothing too crazy, but like, in my opinion, there should have been some sort of mobs defending it. I also found an Illager Mine, which gave a few more diamonds, but that was literally it. And then for the entirety of Day 73, I kinda just kept hunting villages. However, while doing that, I had a bit of fun with the crates, I got another Fire Dragon, a Necromancer boss, a Spider Queen boss, and that night I also got an Ice Dragon. On the morning of Day 74, I had to repair all my armor, and then I went back out on my quest for the Quiver. I ended up saving one village from a Cyclops by creating it, which I think was actually pretty risky because I'm pretty sure it almost ate me, so maybe not my smartest move. I also found a Taiga village which had like ice skates and stuff, but still not the quiver. And then I got attacked by another mutant skeleton, so I put him in a box. I literally wanted to find any of the other mutants, but skeletons were all that I could find. Then I saw a Cyclops harassing a plains biome, so I hit it with a fly to the moon arrow. Now, let this be a lesson. You ever got a problem, just send it to the moon. That easy. The next day I found two queen bee nests, and then I created both of those as well, and then I used my firestorm arrows to take out the bees that they spawned. I didn't even have any plans or uses for the mobs I was creating, but it was just so addicting for no reason at all. Then, on night 75, I found a giant tower dungeon that I've never seen before. I start looting the ground floor, and it just has tons of artifacts and relics and all kinds of stuff. There were just so many things, but the absolute coolest one that I got here was the Midnight Robe, which made me insanely fast during the nighttime. The higher floors were full of armored zombies and witches, and the loot was pretty basic for the first few floors. However, three floors up, I got a legendary Ring of the Hungerless. It would just keep my hunger bar full, and I never had to eat, which was amazing because these swift pants made me use food a lot. I kind of feel like I might get an item like this in like every single video so far. I promise you it's not on purpose, it just sort of happens. I cleared all the witches on the next few floors, and on the final floor I got some pretty interesting loot. I got an infinity ham, which was an infinite food source which would have been really cool anytime before this dungeon. Then I got a spatial sign which could teleport me back to a saved location, but I already had recall potions so I didn't really need that. And finally, I found an ancient tome for the power enchantment, meaning I could get power 6 on my switch bow. 
and I looked it up online and apparently these tomes require level 35 to use, so I went to hunt a few more dragons. While looking for dragons though, I found this pretty cool yeti which seemed passive, so I hit it with a dart and I put it in a box. I spotted another yeti near a village, but it was infernal, and only hostile mobs could be infernal, so I was a little bit confused. This yeti had a super cute baby with it, but when I got too close to the baby, the yeti attacked me. And when I say that this yeti had more HP than any dragon I've killed so far, I am not exaggerating. This thing took so many arrows to take down, and then it had an extra life which definitely didn't help. Eventually I did take it down though. I was going to take the baby in and raise it as my own and it was going to be super cool, and then I couldn't find the baby anywhere. I guess I had it like died or disappeared, I have no idea. By nightfall, I still hadn't found a single dragon. Though this midnight robe was kind of nuts, I was insanely fast. I then spent that night running around at the speed of sound, taking out ice dragons until I hit level 35. On day 77, I headed home and combined my bow with the ancient tome, which apparently only cost 30 levels, so I got scammed. Yeah, love the internet. I then fenced off my front porch and placed down my yeti. And I used a name tag to name him Cappuccino. I love Cappuccino, he didn't seem aggressive, he was pretty nice, and now I had a new pet. And now what I wanted was a piece of netherite. I did have a mod installed that made it super easy to craft, but that seemed a little bit too cheaty for my taste, so I went to the nether to mine it. I mined with my pickaxe for a hot minute and found literally nothing, and then I decided to try out blast mining with TNT arrows. And it worked like a charm. I almost immediately found a vein of three ancient debris, and then a few blocks away I found my fourth piece. I then built my portal and went back to the overworld, and I actually ended up in a mineshaft. I figured it was a good opportunity to loot it because I hadn't seen one before, but there was literally nothing there. I made my netherite ingot, and then I combined it with my switchbow, giving it multi-shot. I thought that this would make my switchbow fire three arrows at a time, but no, it fires nine of whatever arrow that I shoot now. That's crazy. So I have infinite arrows, and I fire nine per shot. Like, this bow was insane now. This made some arrows even crazier than you might think. Like the TNT arrow when I fire it, the first three would explode and then launch the rest of them super far away and I would cover a massive area in explosions. It was super cool. And of course the triple arrow which fired three arrows at a time now fires like 27 arrows at once which is insane. Like look at this, this is one shot with my bow. Now some arrows did get worse, like for example the uh, teleport arrow was probably not the best but that's fine. And then of course the thunderstorm arrow is just absolutely absurd now. On day 79, I wanted to get a scout enchantment on a helmet which would cause mobs to glow through walls. The idea was to find a tier 5 dragon nest and then hopefully get a dragon egg. I needed more EXP for this though, so I went hunting dragons again. I didn't find a single dragon until that night, but when I did find one, I literally one-shot it with reinforced arrows. Multi-shot was insane. Later on day 80, I took down a lightning dragon and then I found a desert temple with some jump boost rings and basically nothing else worth talking about. I found another temple the next day, which gave a holy locket, which gave some pretty good buffs. And the next temple that I found gave me a talisman that boosted my movement speed in the desert. And then at night, in a desert biome, with that speed boost combined with my midnight robes, I was insanely fast. Like, really fast. Like, uncontrollably fast. It was insane. Then, using that, I ran around at the speed of light, killing more dragons, and then I ended up finding a Badlands biome and I finally spotted a mutant creeper, which I had never seen in this entire 100 days until now. It probably would have been a threat before, but my bow was so insane at this point that I shot it and killed it in one hit. It blew up into an egg, which for some reason I chose to punch, and it just sort of blew up into gunpowder. I was probably meant to do something else with that, but I didn't know, so that's what I did, and that's all I got. I went back home the next day and enchanted two diamond helmets and got Scout 3 on both of them and then I combined them to get a scout for helmet. This would hopefully help me find a tier 5 dragon nest. I then used all of my remaining experience to repair my armor. Next, I made potions of night vision because the caves were way too dark for my liking and I kinda hated it. I wanted to enchant some more pickaxes because mine was nearly broken, so I went to an ice biome and started hunting mobs. I killed mutant skeletons and creepers and I also put a mutant creeper in a crate to add to my collection. I also found a mutant enderman, and I guess because of my multi-shot enchantment, it can't dodge all the arrows at once, and I actually managed to kill it. 
and I was about to take on an Illager dungeon when somehow I accidentally got the Sniper Duel achievement. I don't really know what I did exactly, but I guess I somehow killed a skeleton, I have no idea. I then killed a few more Ice Dragons until I hit level 36. I went home and I enchanted three Dragon Bone pickaxes, and all of them turned out horrible. No efficiency, no anything, just curses and a bunch of random garbage. So instead, I just enchanted some diamond ones with lower level enchants, and then I repaired my old one to use that instead. You couldn't pay me to use those dragon bone ones. Not a chance. Then I teleported to a desert village and went down to about Y30 in a savanna biome and started looking for a lightning dragon nest. I figured the odds of finding a lightning dragon one specifically were pretty low because, you know, savannas aren't very big, but I had hope. I didn't really know if there was an ideal method of finding these, so I started strip mining. I read online that you could hear the caves from like 100 blocks away, so I turned on subtitles hoping they could maybe help me find one. I mined for a few days and I kept getting completely baited by these giant crystal caverns, which look super cool, they look beautiful, they look amazing, but they're the same shape and size of a dragon's nest and they are not what I need at all. Then on day 85, for half a second, I saw a subtitle that said Coins Clatter. I had literally never seen that subtitle before. So I dug towards that subtitle and I found Charred Cobblestone. I actually found a dragon cave. I really did not expect to find one, I can't even lie. I dug in and there was a massive sleeping red dragon, along with tons of skeletons and other stuff. I wasted no time and I started firing a massive barrage of reinforced arrows at the dragon. And then, of all things, I get shot with a blindness arrow and then I just can't see anymore. That was actually pretty stressful because no matter how good my armor is, a tier 5 dragon is still a tier 5 dragon and could easily kill me. However, uh, whenever the blindness wore off, the dragon was apparently already dead. Like, I knew my bow was good, but I didn't think it was that good. And then I ended up aggroing two Endermen, and I tried punching them, and it didn't work, so I spent like 10 minutes trying to kill them with Firestorm arrows. It took a while, but they went down. I cleared the rest of the mobs in the area, and then I looted the dragon. And I didn't get an egg. It was definitely a tier 5 dragon, because the skull said so, but there was no egg, meaning that it was probably a male dragon. However, despite no egg, these chests were stacked. There were high tier enchanted books, diamond armor, everything. And I could actually use some of the books that I got too, so it was pretty good. On day 86, I went home to use my experience for more enchantments, and I saw on a switch bow that I could get pull speed 3. Because I couldn't find that quiver earlier, this sounded like exactly what I wanted. I enchanted it, and it turns out that combining that with my current bow would use all of my experience, and also downgraded my bow to power 5. That was honestly fine though, because I figured the pull speed was definitely worth it. I tested out the pull speed and it was fantastic. I could fire massive volleys of arrows super fast. On day 87, I got back to digging in an area with a lot of savannas and badlands hoping to find a tier 5 female lightning dragon. I was asking for quite a lot, but I had faith. I kept digging for most of day 87 and then I came across this ravine. I jumped across the ravine and nearly ran full speed right into a lightning dragon's cave. This placement was so convenient because I probably would have missed it otherwise. I assumed the dragon saw me, so I started spamming a massive barrage of arrows. It started completely destroying its own cave, but within a few more volleys, it was dead. This bow was so OP, but honestly, I don't even care, bro. Look how much stronger I've gotten over the past 87 days. It's crazy. I had managed to find and defeat a tier 5 lightning dragon. But the question, though, is was it female? And the answer was a massive yes. I harvested it and got an electric blue lightning dragon egg. It was time, gamers. I checked all the chests, but I'm gonna be honest, they were trash, especially compared to the fire dragon nest, but I didn't care. I had my dragon egg. I was good to go. I wanted to make gold armor for my future dragon, so I made all that I could right now, and then I went and mined gold from an old fire dragon nest to get enough to finish it. Now, to hatch my dragon, it has to be raining. But I also needed Lightning Dragon Blood to make a summoning crystal for my dragon, so I went to look for another Lightning Dragon while waiting for it to rain. I spent the entirety of Day and Night 88 running towards a Badlands biome, hoping to find another Lightning Dragon. Immediately on Day 89, I found a Lightning Dragon, and I used my triple arrows to fire like 27 arrows at once into the dragon, obliterating it. 
Now, I still needed rain to hatch my dragon, but also when it was hatched, I still needed it to grow up. A dragon normally takes 125 days to grow, and I don't know if you noticed, I don't really have that many left. But there's an item called Dragon Meal, which ages a dragon by one day, but it requires four meat and five bones to make. So I needed a lot of bones and a lot of meat. I went ahead and made all the dragon hatching tools that I would need whenever it was hatched, and then I got to hunting. While hunting though, it actually started raining. This was perfect. I recall potion home and put my dragon egg down in a spot where I could easily defend it. I waited by this egg for ages and I was a little worried that I was doing something wrong because it was taking quite a while, but then it happened. Lightning struck and my new dragon was born. I grabbed it in my dragon horn and saw that it was female. And then I slept out the night because the rain was kind of annoying. The next morning I placed her down and put the gold armor on. She looked amazing. I saw that she had a banner slot so I made a lightning dragon banner and it was uh, a little bit too big for her right now. And then I named her Stormy. Was it a very original name? No. Do I care? Also no. Now I needed to farm tons of dragon meal to grow her all the way up, so I got to grinding. While I was hunting for bones, I also managed to beat my first mutant zombie. They had to be burned after being knocked down, so I had to use my firestorm arrows because otherwise the fire went out way too fast. And then another one attacked, but it went down pretty easily. I got a hulk hammer from one of them, but it wasn't a bow, so I couldn't use it. Then the next day, I found one of those really cool dungeons with lots of artifacts and decided to pause my hunting, and it was very worth it. I ended up getting a new belt that increases my looting, and also a talisman that goes on that belt to increase my looting and my luck. Timing could not have been better. And then for the next few days, I just hunted bones at night and meat during the day. By day 95, I was able to craft enough dragon meal to grow Stormy to max size. And she was massive. My own stage 5 lightning dragon. It was amazing. I got on her back and tested out her biting attack and her lightning breath attack. The lightning breath actually destroyed blocks that it hit, which was pretty cool. And then I took to the skies. I could fly my dragon around. This was amazing. I felt like I had infinite power. I flew over to the nearby Illager Archer Tower and using the breath attack, I destroyed it until it was just charred nothingness. I flew around ravaging Illager dungeons and pretty much everything I could find. I tried using Stormy's breath attack to access the mausoleum, but that didn't seem to work. Then from Stormy's back, I fought an ice dragon, which was a little hard to hit, but it died very fast. That night, I made my dragon summoning crystal and then I bound Stormy, which would be super useful if I ever somehow lost her. On day 96, I was starting to prepare to create dragon steel, and then after spending the entire day preparing that and researching, I saw that it was absurdly expensive. I needed like a metric ton of lightning dragon scales, which I definitely could not manage before day 100, so I kind of just gave up on the idea. On day 97, I had a bit of unfinished business to take care of. So you remember that raid that I started back on day like 33? Yeah, it was finally time to deal with that. So I figured the protector area was the most fitting for the job, and then I teleported to the village to finish what I started. The first wave was just the annoying Reaper Pillager along with its army of creepers and then a few dudes with crossbows. In the second wave, there was a giant golem that got absolutely shredded and then my protector golems went to town on the other Illagers. The third wave had a giant Illager King along with some Ravagers and more Griefers. The protector arrows were actually pretty good because they let me deal with the more annoying enemies while my golems dealt with the rest. Then during the next wave while I was fighting the Pillagers, a Hydra joins the fight and attacks. I fired protector arrows at the Hydra and then my golems pushed it all the way away from the raid. And then the next wave had a ton of infernal mobs so I got blinded almost immediately. I was blindly firing arrows into the darkness and I took out most of the pillagers. There was some sort of weird like super witch mob but it didn't really do very much. During the final phase I got blinded again but I managed to take out most of the pillagers. Then the bar at the top had vanished making me think I had won but there were still pillagers around so I was a little bit confused. There was also a weird structure thing that I couldn't break myself so I shot it with some TNT arrows and then I took out all the pillagers that I saw but I never got hero of the village so I don't really know if I truly won or not but as far as I could tell the raid was won. On day 98, I spent most of the day setting up displays of all the things that I got throughout the journey. 
my old dragon armor, a set of mutant skeleton armor, banners for the three dragon elements, and a bunch of boss drops that we had gotten. And now it was finally time to get back at the Illagers. They had been a problem for me this entire 100 days, and it was now their time to be attacked. Remember that giant Illager army base that I found on day like 60? That was my target. I spent like the rest of day 98 flying there on Stormy, and then that night I camped just outside the wall. Day 99, the day of the siege. I could very easily just use Stormy to decimate the place, but that wouldn't really fit the challenge. I wanted to use just the bow for this. I began my attack by launching thunderstorm arrows at all of the wooden buildings and they began burning to the ground. I then got an advancement saying that a general had called for reinforcements, which they would definitely need to try and beat me. I got into the fort and started taking out pillagers left and right with my reinforced arrows. After clearing that entire area, I swapped to my triple arrows trying to take out more across a wider area. I started actually taking damage, which I would really rather not do, so I swapped to the vampire arrows. I was shredding their numbers, and then after a bit, they trapped me in a cobweb and blinded me and then fired arrows from all sides. I was actually a little worried and very impressed here, but I did manage to escape. And once I escaped, I barraged them all with vampire arrows to keep my health up. Then I learned that my pierce arrows were amazing for this. They would fly right through the pillagers and hit the ones behind them, clearing massive numbers at once. I took out pillagers non-stop, and when their numbers were starting to thin, I ran at the tower and cleared the entire thing. Doing this started a timer at the top of my screen, indicating that there were reinforcements on the way. Whenever that timer reached the end, it would spawn a small army of illagers at the front gates. By the time the third wave of reinforcements had arrived, I had cleared out most of the fort. However, my armor was shredded. I wasn't sure if my armor would last the rest of the battle, but I had faith. I started using my triple arrows against the reinforcements, hoping to clear more of their numbers at a time, and oh yeah, it definitely worked. They got shredded. The sun rose on day 100 as I took out the fifth wave of reinforcements. Then the final wave of reinforcements was beaten. I didn't actually realize that it was the last wave and I thought there was one more, but regardless, no more reinforcements. Then I used my Scout 4 helmet to run around the fort and take out the remaining Illagers. I kind of expected an achievement for taking them all out, but that didn't happen, so I took the achievement into my own hands. I spent that night using Stormy's Lightning Breath to decimate the entirety of the Illager fort. Any Illager that may have survived that would have nothing left. I had one. I had come this far as an archer with only a bow. And the journey was complete. And that was 100 days in hardcore Minecraft as an archer with only a bow. Thank you everybody for watching. If you want to see more like it, be sure to sub to the channel and also watch my older videos. Maybe you'll enjoy those as well. And if you have any suggestions for future 100 days videos, be sure to leave them in the comments. But for now, I'm going to call it there. I will see you all in the next video. Later.